It is only a point, but Oxford showed so much more fight and desire than they have done recently. Hello everybody, it's Ian here once again from OUFC Fan View, so it's time for another review of another Oxford United game. We've got to the end of January and Oxford have come off the back of two really poor results and pretty poor performances as the league leaders rolled into town. As I said on my last video, what could possibly go wrong? Oxford were at home to Portsmouth. Usually when we play Portsmouth at home, we do pretty well. There's a lot of negativity around Oxford United before this game, both off and on the field. A lot of it directed from myself. You can go back and see my previous videos where I've been very critical of the last two games and throw into the mix Portsmouth who are made of different stuff this season and sit quite rightly top of the table this is never going to be an easy game but one thing we wanted to see is Oxford show a little bit more fight and a little bit more desire and I'm pleased to say that they did that we took the lead we looked like we were going to throw it away but we came up with a late equaliser to take a share of the spoils and give us something to hang on to to at least stop the slide it feels Finished Oxford United 2, Portsmouth 2. As I normally do, I will go over the team news, I'll give a review of the game, and then I'll give my final thoughts for both sides. You can jump to any point of the video if you like, just jump, use the timestamps that are down below, or chapters, as I think they are called now. But if you do that, the very least you can do is hit that like button, because that does help me out so much. And if you do like the content, consider subscribing. And I do have to give a shout out to Cool Gaming Master James. I think that is the second time you've I've given you a shout out on these videos, but you keep asking for it in the comments. So here you go. Here's your shout out. Enjoy it. You're not getting another one. Let's have a look at the team news and Des Buckingham named exactly the lineup that I wanted to see Oxford play in this game. It's back to 4-2-3-1 and it's a start for Tyler Bure on the right wing and hopefully we'll see Oxford play with a lot more intent like we saw in the second half against Bristol Rovers. There's still no Billy Bowden, there's still no Josh Murphy, and we're not going to see Will Goodwin until that Blackpool game. So it's a paper-thin bench for Oxford United and uh, more evidence that we need players in. We've got Portsmouth now and ex-Oxford's John Massinho has done an exceptional job with Portsmouth this season. Pompey lead the way in Skybet League One. They've only lost four games all season. It's one change from the side that beat Port Vale on Saturday and it's a good one because Marlon Pack who scored a stunning free kick in this fixture last season, comes into the side. 14 goals for Colby Bishop this season. He leads the line. A new signing, Callum Lang. He's not injured, so he can play. Wouldn't it be nice if we could sign a non-injured player? He's on the bench for Pompey today, stating the bloody obvious... But this is going to be a real test for Oxford United. Portsmouth, when they're at their best, blow teams away. And when they're not at their best, they find a way to grind out wins. Good at set pieces, strong at the back. This is going to be a toughie. And credit to Portsmouth and their fans. They always travel in superb numbers. They always have travelled in superb numbers. And they came in full force to the Sassam Stadium. And they made amazing noise all the way through the game. You heard them a heck of a lot more than you heard the Oxford United fans. And we nearly needed some noise in the first half. Because it wasn't a great spectacle on the pitch. Uh, first 15 minutes. I thought both sides actually started the game quite strongly. Moved the ball around okay. Tyler Burrow with a couple of useful runs for Oxford United. He, he's shown good intent since he started games. But it became very clear as this game went on that Oxford were just playing like the away side in this game, just trying to press Pompey a little bit when they've got the ball, but mainly sitting off them and trying to hit them on the break. But they were playing a lot quicker, which was nice to see. Portsmouth weren't really looking that threatening, despite having a lot of the possession. And mainly their main point of attack was long playing down their left, Oxford right, and then hitting a long switch of play out to Devling on the other flank, but weren't really, well, weren't really creating anything in front of goal. Uh, Portsmouth fans were singing, "This is a library to the Kassam Stadium." We know that. In fact, it's worse. It's worse than a library. It's a shithole. We all know it. And nothing was really happening. Both sides. We're just were struggling to create any chances. And from an Oxford point of view, this was okay for the game, game to remain at nil-nil. Injuries for both sides. Joe Morrell got injured for Portsmouth. Finn Stevens for Oxford United. That's another 
big blow. Uh, certainly with Sam Long out, it meant Oshin Smith was once again a square peg in a round hole. But there was nothing in this game until the end of the first half. And then Oxford got a goal out of nothing. Cameron Brannigan won a challenge in midfield while he was on the ground. And I think that really just threw the Portsmouth players of thinking, uh, uh, is that a foul? But it wasn't given as a foul. McGuane got the ball. He played a ball straight through the middle to Goodrum, who for the first time in the game, Oxford didn't have Portsmouth players surrounding all around him. He got a bit of space. He got to the edge of the box and he pulled out what Tyler Goodrum does. Smashed it low into the bottom corner. Oxford in the lead. 1-0 up. Out of absolutely nothing. But we bloody needed it. And at half time, yeah, a very scrappy game in the first half. And as I said, Portsmouth constro- controlled the lion's share of possession, but never tested Jamie Cumming at all. And we'll get on to Cumming in a little bit. But um, it, it's really the quality in the final third that was letting them down. I can understand Portsmouth fans being frustrated with their performance at the break. But Oxford um, didn't do a lot, but they just had that little bit of magic from Tyler Goodrum. He stepped up and provided that little bit of quality that we've seen so many times now from Goodrum and um, you started to get worried that hopefully he, there's not going to be any bids come in for him on deadline day that might turn Oxford's head but yeah that was the only thing in the game but overall just the, the level of the quality and the effort and the work rate was so much better from Oxford from what we saw on Saturday. Tyler Bure was looking lively down that right hand side at least he was a threat going forward although his final ball still needs some work working on. It wasn't great from Oxford, but it has been much better. But this one is far from over. It's only 1-0 at halftime. What has Des Buckingham done in this changing room? Did they smash a load of mirrors on his first day walking through the door? Because Oxford had to make another change at uh, halftime because of injury. And it was goalkeeper Jamie Cumming, who, uh, standing around doing nothing or <laughs> all of the first half, must have buggered his groin because he went off with a groin injury and he was replaced by Simon Eastwood. And Portsmouth, as you could imagine, started this second half a bit more on the front foot, pushing for that equaliser. Obviously got a little bit of flea in the ear from John McCormick. Senior and 50 minutes had their first shot on target. Really, the first shot of the game. It was a ball in from the left hand side. Camera with a header, but luckily for Oxford, it was straight at Simon Eastwood. But Lurie fired over from distance just a few minutes later, and you could tell Pompey had their tails up. And you were worried that we'd see what we saw against Derby, where Oxford just sat back and defended and let wave after wave of attack came. But it wasn't the case, and Oxford did still look a threat on the break. The likes of Goodrum and Rodriguez and Harris were still working hard and still trying to get Oxford up the pitch when they could but the game was certainly being played at a lot better tempo Pompey bought on their new man Callum Lang after 60 minutes and 10 minutes later Pompey got back into this game and all I can say is how the hell have Oxford let this ball in camera worked well down the right hand side Oxford's left he got quite into the area close to the byline pulled a ball back it may have been Piet Harris who stabbed it towards goal but it was a crowded penalty area it was difficult to see what happened Simon Eastwood has got to fall on this ball he's got to keep the ball but somehow he didn't and the tenacious Colby Bishop was able to just stab away at that ball Eastwood never had it under full control the ball bobbled towards the goal line went over the goal line Portsmouth back in business at 1-1 and all I can say is once again awful defending how how have we let that goal in? But Oxford did keep pushing. Oxford did keep trying to get an equaliser. Portsmouth obviously wanted three points. And Oxford didn't just sit back and accept a point. Uh, Goodrum with an amazing break. The spin of the ball helped the ball stay in. But he got all the way to the Portsmouth byline. Got a ball back across. Oxford players busting a gut to get up there. Brannigan, edge of the box. Difficult volley. And it was deflected over the bar. It was a scrap. Again, the game did get a little bit scrappy. But it could have gone either way. But on 80 minutes, it's Pompey's new guy that gave them the lead and it looked like it was going to be the winner. Marlon Pack played a ball through to Lang who ran from deep and got there ahead of, the, of Greg Lee I think who was covering round uh, from left back uh, but Lang had the ball in the area. Lee was sort of marshalling him and, and but Lang he just couldn't get the ball off Lang and then Moore came round and Brannigan came round and they, they looked like they were marshalling away the danger but they just couldn't get the ball off Lang and Lang was somehow able to just flick it, shovel it Pass it, place it into the net, softly into the net, I might add. Part past a static Simon Eastwood, past three players that were stood around him, not challenging for the ball. Again, Ports Callum Lang, 
a wonderful debut goal for you. That's an answer from a Bombay point of view. Amazing bit of business. From an Oxford point of view, I'm once again thinking, how's it gone in? And then you're just sitting back feeling sorry for yourself, thinking this is going to be another game where we've let slip. It's another defeat. You're waiting for all the doom and gloom to happen. But Oxford did keep giving it a go to their credit. James Henry came on. He forced Norris into a punch over the bar from a tight angle. And then, and then on 90, 90th minute, Oxford get the equaliser. And credit to Oxford United for not giving this up. It's uh, Rodriguez who plays the ball forward to Harris. Harris does really well to wriggle free from defenders. Portsmouth will probably be saying the same thing I'm saying is why didn't someone make a tackle on him? But Harris gets some space on the edge of the box. It's a good shot. It's well saved by Norris but the ball bounces straight up in the air and James Henry is quickest to react. Taps it in from a yard out. James Henry, he loves playing against Pompey, doesn't it? He gets the equaliser and all of a sudden the the mood has changed massively with Oxford United. And Oxford United weren't done. They tried to go for a win. Both sides still went for the win. Even on the 90th minute, there was a couple of good efforts from Odonka, one from Rodriguez, and, you know, a good Pompey was still going for it from as well. There was a good ball played it, header over the bar from Pack, and then a good ball, dangerous attack from Pompey where uh, I think it was Lowry or I think it was Lane played a ball into a really dangerous area and Brown just got his foot there ahead of Bishop uh, to put it behind for a corner but honours even in the end when the Russell finally went and everybody breathe and Oxford take a point when it looked like they might get three it looked like they might get none so in the end quite happy with it so that brings me to my final thoughts and let's start with the visiting side Portsmouth and um I look I don't think you play great today I think all Portsmouth fans will probably say you've been a lot better at points in this season. But the thing that's impressed me about Pompey is you're finding a way to win. I don't think you were great in the games against Fleetwood or the games against Port Vale, but you found a way to win. 1-0 down today, didn't panic, kept pushing and found a way to get those goals. Just found a way you know, constant threats, uh, good ball, ball, players pulling the strings in midfield like Marlon Pack. Uh, good off, good support from the wings, like from the likes of Kamara from Lane. Uh, uh, and just, you know, Colby Bishop, a constant threat up there of being a target man. Ha obviously, Callum Lang did really well when he came on. But not, I wouldn't say, I would say you're still going through a bit of a, bit of a period where you're not at your best. And, and it's at the point now where you either look at it and say, we really need to kick on now if we're going to get prom get one of the automatic spots or are you looking at it and thinking well we're playing crap but we're still not losing and we're winning the majority of the games with a couple of more strengths and then a couple of positions we're well set for another push at the end and I'm interested to know your thoughts and I'm interested to know your thoughts on John Massinho obviously he's extremely well guarded uh, regarded by us Oxford United fans and it is good to see him doing really well not a huge amount of love lost at times there's been some history between Oxford United and Portsmouth fans but once again I don't think your side played great today but your fans traveled in great numbers as you always do and you mate nearly you nearly came away with three points today um and I think you, you, you'd you be proud of the comeback that your side did. But let me know your thoughts down below. Let me know what signings you think need to be made while the window is still open. And whether you do think that you are going to get one of those two automatic spots this season. And that brings me on to Oxford United. And um, first and foremost... The even if we'd have lost this game 2-1, the effort and the work rate and the determination from Oxford United was so much better today. And that is the minimum that we expect, but we haven't been seeing it lately. So it was good to see that from the boys today. They put a really good shift in. Now, defensively, what the hell is going on with these two really soft goals that we conceded? I thought we actually defended all right at times today. We didn't give Portsmouth too many clear-cut sights at goal. I thought generally the we did quite well of back ganging up on the Portsmouth players. They didn't look too much of a threat from set pieces or from crosses into the box. But just those couple of little lapses in concentration and a couple of soft goals that seem to be going against us now. And that's three, the last five goals we conceded really been avoidable and Oxford have got to really cut those uh, those goals out if we're going to have any chance of staying in and around the playoffs. 
But going forward, things did look so much better. Tyler Bure provided that pace on the right-hand side, and that just three frees up so many other players. When they're worried about him, it just gives more space for the likes of Harris, Rodriguez, and Goodrum. But Oxford moved the ball with more pace. In the second half, we were much more direct, just trying to play balls over the top. I thought Gatlin O'Donker actually did quite well when he came on in this game. It might be the last we see of him before he goes out on loan. But... Uh, there were signs there of Oxford getting back to similar levels of what we saw on the early parts of the season. But I have to say, my goodness, we're not getting much luck with injuries, are we? Like, I, I didn't, I, the, the excuse, I don't like using it as an excuse, but it gets to a point where you have to address it. And that's four players now that we've lost to injury in the last three games, is it? We lost Bennett and we lost Long against Barnsley. And now we've lost Finn Stevens. And we've lost Jamie Cumming. And that just creates more headaches for Des Buckingham. We don't know how injured Jamie Cumming's going to be. Is that going to be a case that we send him back to get somebody else in? Does that scupper our plans towards getting any other people? And the job, it's just it, it, it just seemed like he can't fix any problems at the moment. I do feel sorry for him in that regard, Des Buckingham, because he's not getting much luck in the injury department. And these players aren't coming back to fitness with any speed like the likes of Bowden and the likes of Murphy. But at least Oxford kept plodding along today and at least Oxford showed some desire and they showed some bravery and and that was that was good to see. And and I confident now of going into this Reading game that we can put a performance in like that yes we played midweek they haven't but if we can put a similar level of performance in there's no reason why we can't get a result in that game but let me know your thoughts down below let me know what you thought of this one it's been a lot of criticism towards Des Buckingham and this Oxford United team but let me know if you thought this game was better or let me know if you still are on you know derogatory and negative and uh, and scornful towards Oxford uh, this season or for me that's improved things a little bit but I'll be back to do a review of the Reading game if I can barely keep my eyes open after working a night shift and then having to deal with an early kickoff but we will do it because we love this club and uh, yeah thanks for watching I do appreciate it and I'll see you soon